Well, good evening. Um, it's great to see everybody here tonight. And this, this is the point at which we hijack Aging 2.0's uh, event for the evening and take it over. It's what happens when you come to Stanford and we, we, we get our comfortable stepping in here. Um, my name is Ken Smith, and I'm the Director of Mobility Division at the Stanford Center on Longevity. Um, I'd like to tell you just a little bit about the center, uh, and then what I'd like to do is tell you a little bit about how we got to this challenge at this point. And first off, it's just great to see a crowd of this size. I mean, I think this definitely exceeds our expectations of the beginning of a process like this, so it's wonderful. Um, so the Center on Longevity is a multidisciplinary research center uh, at Stanford University. Um, it was founded uh, in 2008 by Dr. Laura Carstensen, who's actually in the back of the room there. Um, and we look to change the culture of aging uh, using research and science and technology. Um, we are in a culture of, uh, uh, well, I'm sorry, we're in a, a situation of unprecedented uh, longevity in our society. I mean, we're really seeing distributions of age within societies that are unprecedented, really, in all of human history, and that's not actually even a, an overstatement. Um, and our mission, our, our small little mission, is to change the culture of that. Um, and we do this primarily by applying the work of our 140-odd faculty affiliates around Stanford, coming from literally every department at the university, and finding ways in which to apply their research uh, to what we do and to look, look, look for ways to translate that research uh, beyond the boundaries of academia. Um, there's another person I'd like to uh, introduce here. I'm the director of the Mobility Division. We work under the heading that if you can reach old age, and we certainly wouldn't try to define what that is, um, physically fit, mentally sharp, and financially secure, that many of the problems typically associated with aging start to fade away and get better. Um, and so as a result, we have a mobility division, which I direct. We have a mind division, which certainly plays very strongly into the, tonight. And Dr. Walter Greenleaf is my colleague, uh, the director of the mind division. Um, and there is another individual, not here tonight, Martha Dee, who directs our financial security division. So, as I said, I wanted to take just a few minutes to tell you how we got to this point, about how we got to the challenge. So, I'm actually, by background, uh, an engineer. Before I came to Stanford and worked at the Center on Longevity, I spent 20-odd uh, years working in uh, first aerospace and then computing the last 12 years at the Intel Corporation. And so, after I came here, I had talked to Laura for some time about trying to do something with a more of a hardcore engineering event, and we had really thought about the idea of doing a design competition. And we thought that what would be so interesting about doing this at a university would be that it would fulfill two goals. First off, universities uh, and students are often unfettered by the kind of preconceptions around design that perhaps people who have been in the industry for many years have, have accumulated over the years. So we thought, boy, this is an opportunity to get some very fresh takes on issues around aging. Um, and then the second part is really much more <coughs> of an educational component. Uh, if you go wander through the design schools uh, around Stanford, around universities, and you ask people who are 19, 20, 21 year, years old, what are they really excited about designing for? The first, re first response is not usually aging. <laughs> right? I mean, you'll, you'll hear in design, design uh, programs, and you'll hear from David Jenga from our e school who may have comments on this, but oftentimes designers are uh, taught to work on things they know well. And this isn't always an area that young people immediately know well. So we see this as an opportunity to educate an entire generation of younger designers in thinking about problems around aging because, frankly, beyond the altruistic part of it, the younger generation is going to feel the effects of the aging population every bit as much as the older generation. And so this is an opportunity for them to start thinking about that now uh, and to get smarter about the topic. So what we found when we got into this, and I can see by the number of people here, that this was a, a, an issue and a group of people that was waiting to talk to each other and didn't know it, or perhaps hadn't talked about it. Because once we started doing this, um, things really started to roll. So the first thing that happened is uh, Russ Hill from um, the New Retirement Forum, who you'll hear from in a minute, came into Laura's office one day and said, what could we do that would make a difference? And and we said, well, you know, we've had this idea about a design competition, but we know you're in the financial services space. And, yeah. and you know, Russ stepped up to the plate and said, this is a good idea. We should, we should do that. And 
stepped up with an initial gift which allowed us to get this started, and for that we are going to be you know, grateful for a long time. Um, following that, I, I got into a discussion with uh, Stephen Jonathan and Katie Fike at Aging 2.0 and said, well, you know, we're putting together this design competition. Uh, and they immediately stepped up and said, man, we want to be a part of this because this is a part of the ecosystem that we're trying to, to pull together that we haven't necessarily pulled in. And this was an opportunity. And they have been wonderful partners to work with. And certainly, we wouldn't have uh, had anything on the scale that we're having now had they, they not participated in that. Um, then we had, we had a competition. We had some people putting together materials. Um, and then we went out and we started talking to people about this. And immediately, our sponsorships grew from the New Retirement Forum, who really our launch sponsor, uh, to a number of other players. Uh, and you'll see quite a few of them around the room tonight. Um, Brookdale Senior Living, Direct Supply, Eschaton, uh, and Home Instead, Silverado, Benchmark, Home Care Assistance. I mean, all of these companies, when, when I mentioned that we were doing this challenge, immediately stepped up and said, how can we help? And that was a great gift because suddenly we were able to take our design competition. We thought, well, we probably have enough funding to get people from the United States to come in and, and be part of this competition. But we're now able to open it up to any university in the world. And we're able to bring those people at the end of the day to Stanford. And I'll talk about the process in just a second here. Um, and then finally, we have a number of other partners that stepped up and said, how can we help if we're not in the funding space? And you see these names here, and you'll you'll see some of those people uh, walking around tonight. And we're grateful to all of our sponsors and all of our collaborators on this. This has been a wonderful experience so far. And by the way, this is the kickoff, so we're just getting this thing started. So the once we had all this, we said, what's this going to look like? And so the process here is that we wanted it to be an open design competition, and we decided we had to pick a topic. So with the help of, of Katie and Stephen and some of the contacts we have, we went out and we said, what's a great topic? What do people really care about in this space? And the thing that came back in an overwhelming way is how are we going to address the issues of cognitive impairment? And sorry about that. And we know that just the numbers are that cognitive impairment is very linked to age. And we know that the population is growing, and the, the population of older people in particular is growing quickly. And if you put those two numbers together, we're entering a place where we're going to see a larger number of people experiencing these issues than we ever had before, and not necessarily a larger number of people care for them. And so that's something that I think this industry is worried about in a very real way. So that led to this challenge, which is to say, how can we challenge our design communities to come up with solutions? And we intentionally didn't say technologies or products. We said solutions um, that will help address this issue by keeping people with early stage cognitive impairment look, uh, independent longer. Then we said, well, we're Stanford. We kind of have a different way of doing things here. And just coming back and saying, we want to get designs, and we want to judge them, and we want to hand out a prize didn't seem like it was taking it far enough. So this is a two-phase competition. And what's going to happen is, in the fall, through probably Thanksgiving, the beginning of December, we're soliciting designs from, as I said, any university in the world. We have a great panel of judges. I encourage you to look at our website. Um, to take a look at who those people are, and we're going to judge down to probably five to eight finalists. Well, you know, we can be a little bit flexible based on what we see. Uh, then we're going to be able to give them a little bit of money and a little bit more time to uh, develop their product or develop their, their solution. And then we're going to bring them back to Stanford in person in April, and we're going to have them present their, their designs to a panel of people in the industry who might really be able to use them to a group of investors who might want to invest in them and really try to try to see if we can take these designs and to move them beyond just the idea stage and at least give them a push down the road towards getting started. Um, so that's what we're all about. I, uh, I know that uh, this group here isn't necessarily the group that's going to be doing the design, but we would invite you to please stay involved with what we're doing, keep up with what's going on the website, sign up for the the updates, um, and we'd love to maybe have you involved as talking to some of the design teams, maybe providing some mentorship to some of them as, as the process goes on. Um, in general, I think there's plenty of room for everybody to participate here, and we hope that you'll, uh, you'll maintain your interest in this. So with that, um, I'd like to introduce Russ Hill, 
who, as I mentioned, was our lead funder on this, and I thought he just might have a few words to say about why he chose to get himself into this. So thank you. Well, I'm going to disappoint you. It's not going to be a long talk. Uh, actually, the reality is Laura Carson's. I must tell you, if you have the chance to have a meal with Laura, it's going to be interesting and expensive. <laughs> For me, I spent uh, many years ago, I spent six years as the chairman of the SCAN Health Plan. Originally, it was a social HMO, which was the experimental thing that became Medicare Advantage. And what we found was the single most important thing to uh, most of our patients were uh, many, many dual eligibles uh, was to stay at home. That's what they wanted to do, no matter what. So we knew how important that was. The new retirement forum is a not-for-profit. I'm actually a financial, in the financial business, so I'm technically known as a financial <coughs> uh, And we tried to reach people with uh, retirement, but for people we couldn't deal with as clients, we couldn't afford to deal with them. So, in talking with Laura originally, uh, in 2012 in the spring, the center put on a conference called Retirement Planning and the Age of Longevity. It was so effective at pulling people together from around the country, Nobel laureates, government people, everybody, we realized that this is really the way that we wanted to operate. Because the tagline of the new retirement form is, information you can trust and act upon. In retirement, we think most of the information people get is either tainted by self-interest from somebody or it's academic and, and people don't understand it. So that's where the, the spring seminar came from. The center, as you probably know, focuses on mind, mobility, and financial security, as, as uh, Ken said. And this really idea is an extension of all of these things. And we thought because, because of the Stanford effect, it would be highly leverageable. And by that I mean for a little bit of money from us and all of their work at AG 2.0, maybe we could come up with something really great. And, I look around this room tonight, and so far, it's been very rewarding. Thanks a lot for coming. <laughs>